all you dudes and doucesses out there. This is Dave with the bass channel. <laughs> it's a thing that my dad used to say when I was a kid and I just thought it was weird, but fuck it. Today, we're looking at a Euro Bantam short scale from Spectre. Okay, what is this base made of? Well, the body is chambered European alder with a pretty thick figured maple cap on it. The, the, the flame on this thing is ridiculous. And if you know anything about the Spectre Euro series, they've got pretty thick tops on them. So this piece of flamed maple is almost half the depth of the entire base. The neck is a three-piece maple neck with graphite rods in it. Always like to see the graphite reinforcement. It's got a rosewood fretboard and 22 frets. A graphite nut. A nut width is 1.63 inches, so it's about like a P base. And of course, it's a 30 inch scale like most shorties. It's got two EMG 35 DC pickups with a BTC active EQ circuit. And the controls are volume, pickup blend, and a stacked treble and bass knob. And fun fact there is that BTC in the Active EQ circuit's name stands for Bass and Treble Concentric, thus the stacked pot. It's not just a clever name. One thing that I will say right off the bat is I'm not a big fan of red. I'm not a big fan of red guitars. I'm not a big fan of red cars. That said, if you want a red bass, this one is really, really gorgeously done, right? It doesn't have to be my favorite color to, to just say, look at this flame and look at this gloss. It's just looks great. Even the back, even the back, the alder just kind of shimmers uh, in the finish. It's, it's really nice. And you can see the neck heel here with the five bolt is super contoured, very nice. And for a rosewood fretboard, this is really dark. I thought it was ebony, no joke. So the Euro series are designed in New York, like Pretty much all Spectres are, and they're made in the Czech Republic. Spectres, of course, have a tilt back headstock, but they got a lot of extra mass with a volute here instead of, uh, you know, ye olde Gibson flat joint. This is uh, nice and massive for a little bit more stability and strength at the headstock joint. So I, I, I feel like I have bad things to say about this because hey, it's not my favorite color and I'm also not a huge fan of active basses. But I will say this, it plays great and it sounds good. Uh, a two band EQ is very simple. So if you can turn both of your knobs at the same time, you get a little bit of scoop and then you can judge your uh, your pickup balance with the, with the blend knob and just go. It's very easy. So if you don't like, you know, three band EQs and push pull pots and coil splitting and all, if you don't need any of that super technical stuff, this is kind of a nice active circuit. Cut your bass, treble, and of course go between your two pickups. So it's very simple. But I think the neck feels nice. I think the fretboard feels nice. 
Uh, it's set up pretty well out of the box. I don't really have any complaints about that. Um, around the around the studio, there was a couple of mixed feelings about the uh, the neck itself, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. The thing is that the Euro Bantams are not cheap. This is a high end instrument coming in at somewhere in the neighborhood of two thousand US. So. I think that you should find one of these and play it to determine whether it's worth it to you. It's got a lot of the really high-end, nice uh, um, stylings of Spectres, um, and it's just a shorter scale. So think of this like a Euro, uh, maybe not a Euro LX, it doesn't have like the, you know, the nice uh, inlays or what have you, but think of this like a Euro, but in short scale. This one's a tough one. Some of the instruments that we have reviewed, we can say all day long, yes, this is worth this much money, or no, this is not. I think for this bass, uh, being you know two thousand dollars, it's going to be really up to you. You might love it, you might not love it, or you might be somewhere in the middle. And I think ultimately the value proposition of this instrument is going to vary from person to person. One cool thing about this bass that might be the ultimate selling point is if you're thinking of short scales as that Jack Bruce EB uh, uh, Gibson SG bass, super thump, super mud kind of a thing, this is not it. This is the sound of, say, your 90s active Spectre bass, uh, just in a smaller package. It has all of that tone, it's got all of that zing and clank, and I don't even know if we could get any real mud out of it. Uh, maybe if we turned everything all the way down tone-wise, put it all on the neck pickup, we might get most of the way to mud town, but I don't think it's ever going to get all the way there. Would I buy it myself? Well, I appreciate it for what it is. I mean, if I did, I wouldn't buy this color. But basically, I can appreciate the instrument that it is and everything that it's got going on and all the positives. It just doesn't happen to be my personal cup of tea. So, again, your mileage may vary, but uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Shorties. This is Dave with the Bass Channel, and I'll see you next time.